Once again, the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine brings you The Thirteen Nights of Halloween with Rish Outfield and Big Hanklevich. <sighs> Sorry. Well, 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 keep going. Or am I supposed to recognize it? I don't know if I could uh, take it further. That's why I quit. Welcome, everybody, to a glorious bad new episode of the 13 nights of halloween oh i got a message from the lawyer that is fine oh okay good he feels like that we can actually guarantee that we can deliver that uh i'm big anklevich oh sorry i was gonna try and help you along because you seemed stumped i am stumped look at this wait you said you were rich outfield i am rich outfield i'm big anklevich i am iron man i am spartacus no, no, no. My wife and I are both Spartacus. Ryan, it's all right. <clears throat> I still am Rich Outfield. Have I said that yet? You did, but I talked over it. That's all right. How about if you drive on this one? Okay. Oh, I lost the keys. Oh, <laughs> the cat's eating it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we got another fun-filled episode of Halloween talking. I was thinking maybe we'd change it up slightly uh, this time around. And instead of talking about what scares us or talking about chuds, we'll talk about something a little different, like uh, Halloween stuff. We did spend one night where we talked a little bit about Halloween traditions. I guess I've got a lot to learn about Halloween tradition. <laughs> and I think we talked mostly about Halloween decorations, but we didn't mention much about Halloween costumes. I thought it would be cool to talk about Halloween costumes from the past that maybe you had when you were a child, stories about Halloween costumes, etc. When I was a kid, I was on the lower end of a large family. So what my mom would do was we had a, just a box that was kept to in the garage. In. Yes, just the box that we lived in. That was my life. How about you? We dreamed of a cardboard box. Uh, yeah, no, we had a box in the garage that would just sit up on the uh, high shelf all year long. It was the Halloween costume box. And every year, you know, sometimes she would make new ones and those would be added to the box. Other times it was just, oh, we don't have time to make new one. Go look in the box and pick one. So there were times when I would wear the same costume that, you know, a brother or sister had worn years earlier. And other times... I'd get a freshly made because my mom was big on sewing and she would get the patterns and make up these pretty impressive costumes sometimes, but not always. So we had a lot of costumes. We would play with these things. That's, it wasn't just for Halloween. Right. We would get them out and we would put them on during the year at other times too. And so a lot of the costumes weren't complete because of that. There'd be parts missing that we'd played with and never put back. And now they were lost at the bottom of the wood pile or something like that. But yeah, I, I always thought that was pretty cool just to have a box. And we did that with our kids, you know, as they had costumes, we would save them and it would just go into their dress up box. And generally, they wouldn't use a costume again for Halloween. We'd always get them a new costume each year, but they would get out those costumes from before and play with them a lot during the year, just as toys and stuff like that. You know, they'd pull out their Batman costume, put it on. And there were even times where we'd go after Halloween just ended and get some of those costumes that they might enjoy dressing up in during the year to play with as you get them on super sale right after Halloween's over. That's become a tradition for me to go the day after Halloween or, you know, two days after. It started when I was in L.A. You know, I had so little money just because almost all the money went to rent. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to decorate and wanted to go all out because I love Halloween. And yeah, I realized that things went on sale, like super clearance, like 75% off if you went right after Halloween. And so it's something that I've done all these years later. And then last week you were talking about decorating the yard and all that. And now it's close enough to Halloween that I actually have gone out and decorated the yard. And every year there's a couple extra things that I didn't have the year before. But because I never put them up, I got them after Halloween. I'd forgotten that I had them. Right. And so I had another one of those inflatable things, you know, the, the that has a little fan at the bottom that uh -huh. blows air into it. And eventually one of the kids will poke a hole in it with a stick or something. But it was brand new. And it just, I just, I, I had no idea where it came from or anything. But it was one <laughs> of those things where it was like 75% off. And so, of course, I bought it. And it didn't come from there, actually. 
came from elsewhere. Zoom chink. And 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 I also will buy costumes. And yeah, there were a couple at the bottom of the box that were still in the cellophane. You never still been hadn't used that sexy nurse costume. <laughs> I keep thinking I'll get the chance. Is it deluded of me to keep thinking that eventually? Oh, eventually you'll put that thing on. <laughs> I mean, that, you know, that's something we've talked about, and maybe we will again, the sexy costumes. But uh, Oh, let me interrupt real quick. Uh, today I heard that uh, PBS is suing or sent out a cease and desist or something like that because of the sexy Big Bird costume. <laughs> huh. Well, maybe they do have too much uh, funding. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we've talked about it before, but yeah, Halloween for women is now apparently uh, you must dress like a slut. No matter what it is that you're going to be, it better be slutty. Here, here. I agree completely with the opinion you just stated, with the demand you just made. <laughs> but yes, uh, there, were, there were some costumes at the bottom of the box. And, uh, you know, I guess if I ever had kids, I would pick them up a few extra costumes just for role play or whatever the deal is. Um, I got just for their D and D group. <laughs> oh, I would support the crap out of that. So sort of you just keep buying them new Viking costumes and new uh, troll outfits. It beats them sitting in front of the TV, watching adventure time. That's true. The idea of make believe and, and enjoy being a kid is, is cool to me. And, and uh, you know, a lot of people put that away and never go back and maybe they are right, but, so far, I stay away from the growing up thing. <laughs> I hadn't noticed. But the dressing up thing about Halloween is so fun. You know, you're wearing a Halloween costume right now? I guess technically I am. Yeah, that, no, not even technically. That shirt was a, a Halloween costume. I bought that and gave that to you for your birthday or Christmas or something like that at one time. But yeah, that was actually a low tech. I don't know. Low tech isn't the right way to put it, but a low cost, low effort Captain America outfit here, which is basically exactly it's like Captain America's outfit, but on a T-shirt. That's where it came from originally. How about that? What you wore it as a no, I bought it to give to you. You have one, right? I Captain do. America. Yeah, I have a Captain America one as well. Sorry, that interrupted you. You were going to say something. <laughs> oh, I, I, I really enjoy the dressing up aspect. And I've found that when you have a mask on, when you have a costume on, maybe there's something psychological that happens to you because you, you, you maybe your inhibitions go away or you can pretend to be this other person or, you know, it's just, it's kind of, it honestly does a little bit of what alcohol does for the person that wants to get up and sing in front of a crowd or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Maybe it has you take a step away from yourself and you're no longer the stuttering nervous guy, but you're whatever you're dressed as kind of thing. Cause you, as you mentioned that I did a Frankenfurter costume from Rocky Horror Picture Show. And I tried to go all out with the fishnets and the, you know, mesh material and the hair and the the makeup or whatever. And I became a real like exhibitionist and all that that day that I wore it, you know, putting my leg up on people and stuff like that for pictures and things that I wouldn't, that you couldn't have done, that you wouldn't have gotten away with, or, or maybe I wouldn't have dared on a normal day. And this was when I was still in Los Angeles and, and for a Halloween night, on Santa Monica Boulevard in West Hollywood, they always have this parade, a pride parade kind of thing, only, you know, it's Halloween. And I wore this there and oh my gosh, I was, you know, I was one of them. There were so many people that knew who I was and thought that that was cool because in that community, that's a, he's sort of an iconic character. He's the Captain America of the gay community. <laughs> And I just, uh, I, I don't know. I thought that that was neat. And if there had been another Frankenfurter, if I had ran into, uh, I'm trying to think of other characters in the, I, if I'd ran into a Rocky horror or, you know, a little Nell or, or, or uh, damn it, Janet Weiss on the street, you know, it would have just been this awesome moment of, Oh, you know, and embracing a stranger kind of thing because partly it's the holiday that says it's okay to let your hair down and just do whatever you want. But, but also just the, the costume, it's not really me. <laughs> I, I, and I don't know, maybe that's totally food for the people that hate Halloween to say, this is why that kind of stuff needs to be stopped. We always talk about the slutty Cinderella costume, the slutty big bird, the slutty big bird costume. Yeah. The slutty Betty white costume. 
the, the Halloween is an opportunity for girls to dress provocatively or whatever, but that same sensation that I was talking about has to apply to that too. 364 days a year, this girl feels fat or she feels unattractive or she feels like she can't measure up to whatever crazy ideal that there is on the television or in the school or, you know, in the, the magazine ad or whatever. But on Halloween, she can pretend to be that person. She can pretend to have the confidence to wear a, a micro mini skirt or something, you know, that lets her bosoms hang all out. And the attention that she gets is, I almost want to say it's a safe kind of attention, you know, it's a judgment free day for 24 hours or whatever kind of thing. And, and you know what? I don't know. I'm not a pretty girl or a, an ugly girl or, or a girl at all, really. You're a so-so girl. Oh, thank you, man. <laughs> and, and for me, it's always a mystery, you know, the, the feminine psyche and all that. But that's my guess of, you know, why some of these girls who are so repressed or so told what you have to do or, you know, the, the nice girls don't. But I do. <laughs> they, they, they're, they're told, you know, that, that this is wrong and all that. But, but for one day, ah, it's all right. Knock yourself out, kid. You let off some steam or just see how the other half lives or whatever. I, I, you know, I don't know. I, guess, I, we, I just found out that Abby Hilton is going to be joining us on a, on a couple of episodes, right? Uh-huh. And so I'm mentally compiling like a whole list of questions to ask her <laughs> that I can't ask you because you're like, well, I'm not a... But, well, you know, some of them are if a successful author does it, you know, because I don't think you and I qualify, qualify at least not to the level that she does. I mean, unless people want to donate, it's just like put, put <laughs> calorie catchers to shame. Like you show them Panamandora menagerie there. But this is my guess of why a girl, a, a, you know, a, a non slutty girl would dress sluttily for Halloween. And every school has the tart, has the, the sorry, oh yes, the boarding school of the late 18th century. No, but every school has, you know, the slutty girls or the girls that, you know, that oh, I could go for a nice piece of raspberry tart with this one. Exactly. That I'm sure that's a metaphor for something. And I, I also could go for that. But everybody's got the girls that are more promiscuous or the way they dress is more scandalous or whatever like that. And 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 if you're not that girl, maybe you hate the girl that's that gets all the attention by showing cleavage or, or our leg or whatever it might be or going down on the boys. But part of you might be envious of that, of the attention or the, you know, the, the guys look at her differently than they look at me. You know what I mean? And on Halloween, you can experience a little bit of what her life might be. I, I, I don't know. Again, I'm asking you as though you know. I don't. But why don't you give me your opinion? Why all the slutty costumes? And why would, why would a girl who's not a slut, dress sluttily. I don't know. Maybe it's just the other way. Maybe it's the guy wants his girl to have that kind of a uh, feeling, so he buys her the slutty Veronica or the slutty Betty costume. And that way, then maybe by the time the night's over, he finally gets lucky. I don't know. Um, well, see, you're always talking. And it's funny that I said, now you talk, but let me interrupt you and not <laughs> let you talk. But you're always talking about buying your wife a, a Wonder Woman costume or a Zsa, Zsa Gabor costume or some awesome, sexy diva goddess kind of costume. You're like, oh, I'm going to get my wife to wear this sexy Aunt B from the Andy <laughs> Griffith show costume. And I'm, I always wonder, well, why do you say these things? I don't know. Because I know I you're not going to buy it. Yeah, and if you buy bought it, it she, she would never wear, wear it. it. So I don't know. It, a guy can dream, can he? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the deal is with that. I don't know. Okay, the question, what, the first question was, why are there so many slutty costumes? Why is Halloween scary things for kids or for boys or whatever? But for girls, it's even sluttier, Tinkerbell or, you know, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't understand it. Maybe it's just the way our society is heading that that's what you have to do when you're going to dress up. I don't understand it, to tell you the truth. It's funny because it seems like it's a huge proliferation. The costumes out there are all like that, yet I don't know any people that would wear those. I don't see anyone wearing them. You know, here's an interesting thing, and I was going to ask you this before we got off on the slutty costume tangent. tangent. Uh, maybe, I don't know if you've noticed this, but now that we're old old sad people it seems really less common for someone our age to even have a costume 
on Halloween to put on a costume, to go somewhere with a costume on. Maybe it's just that nowadays we're just the person sitting there watching the Monday night football game while the kids come ringing the doorbell and we just get up and give them the candy and then go sit back down and wait till the doorbell rings the next time we're that person now instead of the person that's going to the Halloween party or the person that's doing whatever it is but it just seems like I don't know it made me sad like it was several years many years probably and then we decided to have a Halloween party at our house and you know we had our friends over and all their kids and did the these are the brains put your hands in the, it's the brains for all the kids to do and all that kind of stuff for the first time in like five or more years for maybe even 10 years i actually wore a costume and it wasn't a big deal costume i just wore like tan pants and a tan sweater and then i put little dog ears and a little doggy tail on and that was my car. And I think my wife wore a black shirt and black pants and put black cat ears and a black cat tail on. So we were a dog and a cat. But it was cool. Like for the first time, I, I was all, I had a good time and it was fun. And I was just like, man, why, why, why do I never, ever dress up on Halloween? I still mostly don't. I don't understand why it is. Once you get old, you just don't care. You're like, okay, kids, you all have to have costumes because... It's Halloween's coming. I'm not going to get a costume, but there was one other time where my son wanted to be a Jedi for Halloween, and so we got the the Jedi pattern. I think it may have come with a adult version and a child version of it. Either that or I forced my wife to buy also the adult version and I had her make a Jedi costume for me and one for my son. And we both and I went out, I wore it and we went out trick or treating and I was wearing the Jedi costume out there and and you will again. I still have the majority of it. I think the boot tops or whatever you want to call those things are not in shape for use anymore. So I'd have to find some way to repair that. Yeah, but, but yeah. three years from now, by the time your youngest is old enough to know what a Jedi is and want to wave a lightsaber around or whatever, you can wear that again. I could. I could. I don't know if we have my son's old costume and I think it went into the costume, you know, the dress up box. And I don't think it's complete anymore. It's missing a, a large number of parts or all. It may just be completely gone, unfortunately. But yeah, I have that. And recently I've been trying to, because we always have at work, you know, we have a little special lunch on Halloween and, you know, there's food and stuff and everybody wears their costume and they do a little contest where they have everybody line up and then, okay, who likes this one the best? And they have everybody cheer and then they decide, okay, this one got the most cheers, he wins. But uh, for, I didn't even wear a costume to those things for most of the time. There was the one year that you worked there with me and I sort of dressed up. I had something. I, I, I just grabbed my crazy red wig that I would wear to soccer games and I put on face paint and I went like that. And you had this full on freaking Rob Zombie outfit to the point where you showed up there and somebody was like, hi, I don't know if I know who you are under that. Are you cleared to be in the building? <laughs> but I mostly don't. I've been trying to put in at least a little bit of effort. I've been I've been doing like costumes on the cheap for the last couple of years where I like have already have a Superman T-shirt. And then I'll just get like a cape and I'll wear that with uh, with my shirt that day. And like I think last year I got a green mask and a little green ring and I wore my Green Lantern uh, t-shirt and was Green Lantern for the day. But I've been trying to at least do something because for the most part I just suck. I'm just like, yeah, I'm just going to show up with no costume at all and be boring. Why is it that when we get older we just decide that it's we're too cool or we're too old? Or what is it that makes us decide not to dress up anymore? I don't know. You're including me in this madness and I'm not a part of it. I, I do dress up every Halloween, but the difference between you and me is obviously the that you have the kids. You have an outlet for dressing them up and l seeing Halloween through their eyes. And, and, you know, it's cuter to have your kids dress up than to do it yourself. And also, you know, they go to school, they go trick or treating, right. they have Halloween carnivals or whatever. And it gets way hard. It's like you said, unless you throw the party yourself, there's or, not as many opportunities to it. Or and if at least you're going to some sort of a party, you might dress up. But as an adult with children, sometimes that's really hard. I mean, you got kids, you got to go trick or treating with this one or that one or whatever. So you can't go to the Halloween party that night like you might have done when you were single and you could just do what you wanted. 
I think that might be part of it. If you don't have a reason to wear a costume, then you're probably not going to. Even the reason just being that today is Halloween generally isn't enough of a reason. Well, you've got to make it a priority because like you said, it is work. And, and there's so many other things demanding your time and your money. If it's if it's not fun for you, if it's not worth it, or if it's going to just end up being a waste, then, then don't do it. But, uh, you know, last year I took the kids out, my nephews, to trick-or-treating for the very first time. And it was really fun. And uh, this year or they're going to be Captain America and Thor. And so, you know, I've gotten the best Captain America and Thor costumes for them. Um, and I wanted to dress up as something, you know, to go along with them. And, uh, and so I thought it would be cool if I were Loki uh, because they do make a Loki costume, but nobody carries it. Uh -huh. And the only one I found uh, on Amazon was the XXL <laughs> and uh, so you bought it for me and now I have to go trick-or-treating with you <laughs> well it just I, I thought well what would it take to put together a Loki costume and it's weird because there's no Hawkeye costumes yeah I mean it's all Hulk and Thor and Cap but you don't I don't think you really see Nick Furies and you don't see Hawkeyes and I, I don't know that I've seen any Black Widows. Maybe there's there a Black might Widow be. or something It's like that. sexy enough that there's probably sexy oh, Black yeah. Widow costumes. Yeah, but I'm talking about children's costumes or whatever. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, okay. and, and it would be really neat to go to a party and see a Black Widow costume. I mean, because actually what Scarlett Johansson wears in the movie is way toned down, you know, from what Black Widow traditionally wears. Uh -huh. But it, it's been just an uphill climb for Loki. And I was thinking, because I got my nephew the hammer and I got my other nephew the shield. And I thought, well, I need an Agent Coulson killing spear. But they don't make one of those. And I was like, well, okay, how can I improvise that? Or how can I have some kind of Gandalf staff and say that it's Loki's? And finally, I became like you. And I just said, you know, it's not worth it to do all this stuff. Because I was going to get a wig and, and cut it. Because if you ever see the, the next time you see the movie... He's all got a bunch of hair on one side and no hair on the other side or very short hair on the other side. And I was like, well, why is that? But I like that. And so I was going to cut the wig so that there was, you know, it was all shaggy on one side and just kind of regular size on the other. And ultimately I just said, well, you know, I've got all these other costumes that I bought, like I said, after Halloween last year or whatever. I'm just going to wear one of those and nobody else is going to care. I was the only one that would care if I complimented these uh -huh. two boys in their costume that's something that i've always wanted to do though we used to go like this was back before my wife worked full-time so yes yeah, so she likely had time enough to actually sew costumes for the kids we used to go to the store the joann's i guess it is that has all the, the a fabric store or what? right it has all the patterns and you can look at all their their options and they would have patterns where it was like the various characters from the Wizard of Oz. So you had the Dorothy costume and you had the lion and you had the scarecrow. And I thought it would be so cool for us to do that as a family. Like one of us is the lion and one of us is the wicked witch and one of us is the good witch and one of us is the Dorothy and one of us is the scarecrow and the tin man and so forth. Still haven't done that, but I, I I was even mentioning that to you. I think it was to you the other day where I was saying, oh, maybe we could all be different Star Wars characters. Like one of us could be Princess Leia and one of us could be uh, Chewbacca. And Chewbacca costume would probably take a lot. But <laughs> Yeah, but you're so much taller than the others that, oh, that you, you could po probably good. pull off Chewie. And if your blonde son were Luke, it would be the height would be pretty good. And then I could have the, the, the new baby be Han. With a little bitty uh, black no, the, vest. The new baby could be R2. <laughs> the new baby could <laughs> or Yoda. be Yoda. <laughs> oh, that would be great. <laughs> I, I see, all these things are really cool, but they cost money and time. They do. They cost a great deal of money if you want to do it right, and they cost a great deal of time if you want to make them yourselves and save money. Yeah. I, and the worst part is, for the most part, they're a one-day thing. You do all that, you do it, and you use it for one day, and then that's it. And maybe, I guess, you could throw it in a box and save it for years and then you can pull it out like five years down the line. Be like, okay, I'm the Wicked Witch of the West again this year. <laughs> I'll get you and your little dog. I guess as an adult, you could probably get away with that. But uh, it wouldn't work very well for me now that I don't fit the stuff that I used to fit. I wonder if that stupid Jedi costume wouldn't even fit me very well anymore. But Although, you're thinner now. Right. And so it'd just be baggier, right? Is it even Well, matter? yeah. I don't know. 
I haven't tried it on to see how awful it looks or better it looks. I, I remember it being a slightly small, actually, now that I think about Ooh, it, so it might work. It was made for future you. I don't remember ever seeing a picture of you in the Jedi costume. Do you think you have those? I don't know if I do, to tell you the truth. I think during lunch, you said that your son has reached that age where he does not... He doesn't give crap one about dressing up anymore. He's gotten to that age where... It's not cool? Is that what it is? Or it's just it's not worth the effort? Or do all of his friends just say, eh, Halloween, and they're making the hand gesture? Yes, the one you're imagining right now. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think it's quite to that point yet. Like, he's too cool. I think he's just like, "Uh, I'd like to go trick-or-treating, but I don't want to be the one baby of the group or something. All my friends are like, they're too cool. So if I go, then I'm the baby. Okay, and yeah, I guess I can see that. Something like that. I'm not sure. I don't think he's to the level where he thinks it sucks or that it's not cool. I don't know. He, he Seventh grade is always in this year. When I was a kid, I, you know how late I trick-or-treated till? Till you were 34. I don't know. I didn't know you as a kid. I was a sophomore in high school the last year that I trick-or-treated. Wow. I, <laughs> I actually wore my... Football high school uniform. football uniform as my costume one year Butthole. that's how friggin old i was i remember uh one year it was a monday night on halloween and me and my friends were all wearing our freaking uh high school football uniforms and a guy came, a guy who was watching the monday night football game came to the door to give out the candy and he's like whoa you guys are bigger than Elway. What the heck? <laughs> That's how bad I was. And I was just like, man, my son's given it up like four years before I even considered it. Yes, but you said at the last minute last year, he said he did want to dress up. And you guys made a makeshift Ghostbusters uniform uh-huh. for him. And I thought, wow, you know what? That would be so cool. If that was easy to do, all of you should be Ghostbusters. Because you match <laughs> there you go. and it's easy and that's something that everybody would recognize instantly. And, it, you know, it's cool, but it hopefully wouldn't take a lot of work. You said that you put, like, the back, vacuum Yeah, we put the vacuum said, hose, hose into a black backpack. And uh, we the one thing that we did do is we had to get a tan, like, work shirt looking kind of thing from uh, the thrift store. And then we just print it out on just a piece of paper, uh, Ghostbusters logos, and just kind of... I, I, this stuff is called fusible webbing or something like that. It's this stuff basically that you can iron things onto paper or cloth or whatever, and then you can iron them onto other cloth. We use that to stick them onto his outfit. It works for about four or five hours with a piece of paper. With with actual cloth, it'll stay and stay forever, but. With just sticking a piece of paper on it, it starts to peel off. By the end of the day, it was already starting to peel off and go away. But yeah, we stuck a few Ghostbuster logos on his clothes in crucial areas. And he just had a pair of tan pants on, a tan shirt, and uh, yeah, a black backpack with the hose out of it. And that was enough for people to know he was a Ghostbuster. And uh, I thought it turned out pretty good, especially for the very last, last, last minuteness of it. And so this year, no costume. It remains to be seen. We keep asking him, do you want to have a costume? What are you going to wear? Do you want to wear? I mean, I don't expect him probably to wear it to school. Because I think by the time you're in middle school, you don't wear your costume to school unless you're a hot girl wearing the slutty Big Bird costume or whatever. Because girls seem to wear costumes to school way longer than guys do. Because I guess they can get away with it. It's cute to wear a costume, but it's not tough to wear a costume or whatever. I don't know what it is. But, I mean, girls would wear costumes well into high school, to school on Halloween. Guys, not so much. Unless they had something that was tough. See, I'm I'm not a parent. It would be difficult for me to have to go through all of that, you know, what are the other kids going to think? Bullcrap. You know what I mean? Just the pressure and the the fear of not being liked or not being accepted or standing out is such a big part of growing up and it means nothing. And it's, I, I just, every time I think of that, of, of, you know, how much heartache I went through because, you know, what if the kids don't like nobody like, you know, what if they think I'm weird? What if they, you know, kind they're of going to laugh at you. Yes, that. And yeah, to have kids that are growing up 
you know, they, maybe they want to dress up, but they don't want to look like a dork or get ridiculed or be the only one or all that. But whereas, you know, now as an adult, I can handle being the only one. Mm-hmm. And we did the zombie walk. Did we t- talk about that? Did we do a podcast about the zombie walk? I don't know that we ever did. Oh, I think that was part of our reasoning for doing it is that we wanted to do it forever and then, then we could talk about it. For me, the, just the the getting to dress up and dress up the kids was so much fun. And to, we were center of attention and everybody stopped their cars to look at us. And Everybody uh, pulled out their phones and took pictures and videos of us as we walked by and then looked and went, oh, and deleted them when they realized. And I don't think I talked to you about it, did I? But that night I went to the local paper website and sure enough, there were a couple pictures of us on there, you know, oh, yeah? saved them. But the first comment under the pictures was, you know, what a tremendous waste of time, you know, with all that's going wrong in the world and all that. Why would people and go out and have fun? It bummed the hell out of me first. And then I just became insanely hostile because it was like, <laughs> like who are you? Oh, oh, like you don't sit in front of the f-ing TV all day or chug down 12 quarts of, of a Miller highlight on a Friday night or or beat the shit out of your bastard children. You know, whatever you do to pass your time yeah, to let off some steam or just to have some fun. This was something that I did with the kids and my friend and his kid that they'll hopefully remember for a long time. You know, it was a special thing. It was an outing and and it was fun. And, and, you know, we got to all have a laugh and then go out and eat together. And and I I just, I hopefully it created a memory for these kids. And yeah, yeah, I guess I get hostile about the, you know, kind of thing, but it's high school. Right. The internet is high school. It is. The internet is middle school. It's oh, no. worse than high school. Middle school is really the worst time of it all. By the time you get to high school, there's a lot of people who have learned a little bit of self-control and they've learned to tone down some of their a-holiness, but they haven't learned it yet in middle school. They're just all a-holes and they just, they won't bite back the a-hole comment. Some will in high school and middle school they don't. Yeah, that's the internet. Nobody bites back that a-hole comment. Let's to, to change the subject, but not really change it, just to change gears or something like that. It might be the better way. Do you have costumes that you wore in the past that are especially memorable to you? Any that, especially if you wore them as childhood, but also, you know, ones that you've worn since? <laughs> I think two episodes ago or something like that, I mentioned V. Do you remember V? The uh-huh. it was a mini series in 1983 that was on NBC. And these aliens they did a came. remake of it not too long ago. Yeah, you know what? I never, I didn't watch it. Me neither. Even though it had uh, Miranda back, that might have been why, because she hair. cut her hair, and I was just like, yeah, I can't do it. We want to remember you as you were. Yeah. It was about a bunch of aliens that come, and the aliens are sort of a analogy for Nazis, and uh, they have uniforms that are very similar to a Nazi uniform kind of thing. Maybe not. But that was what uh, Kenneth Johnson, the creator, was was going for. In fact, I think he originally pitched a... Nazis from space! No, there, there was no from space aspect. I think it was either, you know, he wanted to do a period thing about the Nazis or he wanted to do a modern day a Nazi equivalent kind of thing. And of course, the NBC wouldn't have anything to do with it. But when, once again, the lesson that we've learned about science fiction is you can cloak whatever you want to do, your idea... In the guise of of aliens, in the guise of the future, in the guise of whatever silly technology doesn't yet yet exist, and they they bought it and it was a big hit. Anyhow, I had my mom sew me a visitor's a costume. Yes, uniform. She uh, it was going to cost money and and it was going to be work and all that, but somehow she came up with the idea that if 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 we bought a pair of red pajamas and altered them. Then I could wear them as pajamas afterward, oh. and so you know it's two birds. You know it becomes worth the the effort yeah. of the price. So you know it was moon boots or not moon boots, but like <laughs> like what do you call the Rad. water rain rain boots? Rain you, boots. No, what, what is the actual term for those? They're called rain boots. Definitely, definitely not from Kmart. Slick uh, galoshes. Yeah, you could say galoshes. It, it seems like there's another word, but it doesn't matter. There were black boots that I wore, and then. With the black tape, what do you call that kind of tape? Electrical tape. Electrical tape. We cut out the the symbols 
uh, with electrical tape and all that and just stuck them on there. So it was a temporary thing. And out of PVC pipe, we made the laser gun and then wrapped it in electrical tape. So it looked black instead of white. Anyhow, people knew what I was because that was a big deal Uh then. And I never wore it again. I never wore it as pajamas or anything like I just, it, it, it went away. But years and years later, I got to talk to Kenny Johnson, the, the creator of that show and, and Incredible Hulk. And it seems like there was another show that he did that was really good. But can't think of it right now. And, and I mentioned that to him and, he, and I said, you probably had like an entire generation of kids that made their moms make them visitor uniforms. And he's like, no, I've never heard somebody say that before. He's like, no, you are the weirdest mother I've ever met. He was ashamed to know me. No, no. He was <laughs> thought that that was really neat. And so it, that's the one that immediately comes to mind. Yeah. But as you know, as the years went on, and I probably had like a two or three, four year stretch where I wore no costume because it was, because I was afraid of looking like a loser or too big to, you know, for, for a while there, I would t- take over my mom's job of answering the door and handing uh-huh. out the candy. And that was my way of participating for Halloween. You know, I, I, I didn't get invited to... Halloween parties. I've never bobbed for an apple. Never once. Uh, I've never sucked a guy's dick. I didn't get to participate in the Halloween activities that everybody else got, that you probably took for granted, especially that last one. And I didn't. So, you know, I celebrated the way that I could. We talked about, you know, trying to decorate the, the yard and all that stuff. And uh huh. Did you ever make up your own costume? Being a writer and someone who is into making things up was that ever something that you did as a kid did you ever be like oh i'm gonna be this and you made up something that you would have had to explain to every person that you went to the house of no but when i was my sophomore year of college or freshman year or something like that i made a roland deshane the gunslinger costume (laughs) you know i had like a slicker and i wrapped up like two or three of my fingers on my left hand or whatever. I think they're supposed to be the right hand, but I, I had to work and things like that. Yeah, it was the right um, hand. It's because that my fingers had been bitten off by the... Things. Right, with the lobstrosity. Oh, so you remember that. And nobody knew who I was supposed to be. And so I had to explain it over and over again. But that was just at that perfect time where I started to say, you know what? I don't care if anybody thinks that I'm stupid or whatever. This is what I want to be. And I think it's cool. And I, I yeah, I, I had the you know, the pistol and the, the the hat. And there was a cover of one of the trade paperbacks that had him, you know, and he had like a neckerchief and stuff like that. It might've been the, the first book. I, I don't know, but I tried to look as much like that as, as I could. And I, at that point I still didn't shave. So I had to draw <laughs> on the stubble. It was just, I, I remember Sweet. having so much fun on that. And I had to work that day because 20 year old guy drawing on stubble. That just makes me laugh. I had to work that day. And yeah, ultimately the fingers kind of screwed me over because, you know, I couldn't pick things up and I couldn't uh, type and things like that. But in a perfect world, and I know we don't live in one, but in a world written by me, some hot chick would have been like, are you Roland of Gilead? And, you know, the violins would have played. And she's like, I'm Carrie White. And we would have started making out immediately. You know what I mean? But that didn't happen. Things about- didn't go well for uh, Roland DeShane and his... Uh, may- maybe she could have dressed up as his mom. Because uh, things didn't go well for her. And then it would have really worked out. Just like the story. It wasn't Roland the one that killed her? He did kill her. He thought it was Martin or somebody hiding, uh, you know... Uh huh. Like, you know, I never did read that fourth and a half book. I bought it the day it came out and oh, I yeah. still never read You'll it. You'll read it eventually. I don't know what's wrong with me. Okay, I would I like know. to ask you about your costumes and, and embarrassing high school experiences and, and awkward fumblings in the back of a GTO. It was actually a uh, Trans Am. <laughs> The reason I asked if you had ever invented a costume was because there was a time when I did that and it was the lamest thing ever, too. Me and this friend of mine became entranced. We had, I think it was from the costume box, there was a vampire cape. And we pulled this thing out and we played around with it one day. And there was, at the time, and I'm I'm sure you probably remember these guys, but there was the McDonald's commercials that would come on. And they had those little dudes. They just had legs. 
and eyeball little googly eyes the, and the fry guys? mop heads yes and they were the fry guys and they would sing like songs one two three can't catch me you can't catch the fry guys and they would take your fries and run away or something like that i don't remember exactly how it went but i do remember that bit of the song probably because of this costume because we thought oh yeah we could be like the fly guys because we have a cape and we can fly and then we'd be like you can't catch the fly guys <laughs> And so, yeah, this was the characters that we created. And me and my friend went out just wearing a cape. And that was it. And we were the Fly Guys for one Halloween. So you didn't have that fear of what other people would think of you <laughs> issue in, in high school. And school. I should have had more of it. Sometimes I was a, a little weird, a little goofy Maybe it was just because my parents didn't, you know, they had enough kids that they couldn't keep a tight enough rant. Hey, you know, you realize you're going to get completely ridiculed for doing this, right? I didn't have that parent. Are you sure you want to do that? Oh, yeah, mom. No, 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 really. Are you sure? Because maybe you should try this. I have a daughter who's really like that, too. One of my daughters would probably come up with a costume like that i'm surprised it hasn't happened yet and it may still happen in the future and i may maybe it has happened and we've just said are you sure well what about this enough times that she decided on something else i don't know that was me <laughs> i was that guy the guy that wore a cape out and said it was a costume Basically, I was Adam Sandler with the stapler on my head. I'm crazy stapler head. Give me some some candy. candy. I don't know if there was any really cool costumes that I had growing up. Oh, there was one time my mom actually sewed these. I don't know if I really appreciated it, though. But she sewed costumes for me and my brother. My brother was Cookie Monster, I believe it was. And I was Snuffleupagus. How? (laughs) You know, there was a hole cut out for my face. On the top of my head were the big googly eyes with the big eyebrow or eyelashes that Snuffleupagus had. And then I had the trunk came off of my chin and like hung down in front of me. And then basically the rest of it was just this. And it was the grungiest. You know, Snuffleupagus looks like he's got that brownish kind of grungy fur. And yeah, that's what my costume was. I don't know if I ever really appreciated it like I probably should have, but yeah, I was Snuffleupagus one year. That may be the most memorable costume that I ever had. I bet there's probably no one else listening to the show right now that can say, oh, I was Snuffleupagus one year too. And my mom was Sexy Big Bird that year too, just to, you know, to to bring, to tie it all in. Nice. (laughs) Although that might be a little bit more embarrassing for a child. It's his mom. Mom, that, that mini skirt's a little small. I, uh... <laughs> I, so, what are you going to do this year? Uh, my plan is to be Clark Kent. I came up with the idea when we went to a 3D movie. They give you those big, gigantic, horn rimmed glasses. And I popped the lenses out of them and we wore them around as nerd glasses for a while at, at the house with the kids. And then I thought, you know what? Those look really good like Clark Kent glasses. I could just wear like a suit and tie and then just have it unbuttoned like halfway down and like the tie loose and then have a Superman shirt underneath so you can see the top of the symbol like from the edge of the shirt or whatever. And you already have a Superman shirt so you don't have to buy a damn thing. That's right. At least go out and buy like an old timey hat. (laughs) <laughs> find one at goodwill or something like that go get myself a fedora with a little thing that says press <laughs> that would be good stuff unfortunately i don't think my hair has grown enough for me to do the spit curl what are you thinking of doing this year what is your plan you're pulling one of the co- the ones out of the box that were last year right after halloween there was a clearance and there's a headless man costume uh, and i put it on the other day to see if i could scare the kids and and it looked really neat. And I thought, you know, maybe I'll just paint my face up either, as, you know, like all pale and bloody. Or if there's like some kind of glow in the dark paint, I'll do that. Oh, it has a hole in the chest. It's got an extension that you put on your shoulders that looks like the shoulders and, and a, a bloody stump of the head. 
and then your head comes out of a hole that's in the chest and you hold your head as though you're carrying your own severed head. It's beautiful, really. Yeah. It's it fun for the whole way. family. And so I thought that I would either do that, you know, paint my face up or I, if there's a pumpkin mask, I would buy it and it would be like the headless horseman and I'm carrying uh-huh. a, a jack-o'-lantern kind of head. I don't know. I, I Because I don't have much money right now, please donate to the show. The Loki costume that I wanted to buy... That was probably going to be like 40 or 50 bucks. Uh-huh. And that was without Coulson killing staff. And that was without the horn helmet things that he wears. It was, it was really lame. You had to get the Loki deluxe costume, which was like seventy four ninety nine, to get the helmet with like the big mm-hmm. curved horns. And I thought about, well, how could I make that? You could and, whittle it. And I couldn't figure out a way to do that at all. And so... <laughs> Ultimately, I, I'm just, it's its too ambitious. I'm not going to do it. I would like to. I think it would be really neat. I think I'd make a good Loki, but uh, it's not in the cards this year. All right. Just like the uh, Jedi costume, this has been an extra large episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks for listening to it to the end, folks. And uh, we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye, folks. That Gets My Go is produced under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. Sad but true. Next year, there'll be so many super mega. Well, costume's pretty atrocious. I don't know. Yeah. You know what? That'll be the first Superman that a lot of kids know. So It's true. They, they won't know anything. My son went as Superman the year that the Superman, Superman Returns, Returns yeah. happened. I don't know that he ever saw the movie or cared, but... He likes Superman, and that was the Superman costume. I wore that Superman cape with my Superman t-shirt one year. And yeah, some guy was like, why Why are you wearing a brown cape? It was pretty close to brown. <laughs> <laughs>